Well, hello, hello, my dear friends, my dear viewers, welcome back to the channel. And today we start on our speculation journey towards Harry Potter RPG Hogwarts Legacy that was announced last week. And as I said on my sort of react video to the trailer, it was not really a react to the trailer per se, but as I said, I had plans to do some speculation videos about the various facets of the game and here we are. And I want to believe that I am not the only one brimming with questions about this game. Like, how will the game play? How will it feel? What characters are we going to meet, both new and old? Uh, who the headmaster is, who are the teachers, the groundskeeper, the caretaker? Okay, maybe this one is just me. But nonetheless, the cinematic reveal trailer is sure to have left us with a lot of questions. And starting today, I will give my best to provide my answers and my ideas to what the game can be. Now, Stay in mind, this series of videos will be purely speculative, purely speculation. So, if you're not keen on theorizing speculation and the sort, then this videos may not be for you, but I love to do them, I love to think about these things, and let me tell you, I go pretty deep in the lore to make it all work. So. Without further ado, today we will delve into two topics, the setting and the story. Now, starting with the setting, let's go. Hogwarts, late 1800s. This is the closest we get to the setting of this game. Now, late 1800s, I went and checked, late X century can mean anywhere between the 70s and the end of the 90s. So, in this case, it could be anywhere between 1870 and 1899. Now, that's roughly 30 years, that's 29 years to pick from, and we have to consider that we need to pick at least a seven-year period. That's the seven years of the Hogwarts school curriculum. So, at least seven years must be chosen from this time period. Of course, there's some hints that the game will take place outside of the school year. So I want to pick, I want to say at least a decade. But the problem now is not so much the years themselves, but where the game will start. And I think that after much careful consideration and lore picking, I think I nailed at least with 90% certainty the year where the game can start or after which he can start, keeping in mind the time frame between 1870 and 1899. So the precise year that I think the game can either start or start from is 1883. Why do you ask? Well, it's rather simple, really, the answer. It's... Uh, Quidditch goalposts. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Okay, but joking aside, yes, this is a lore-based reason for which I think the game can start in 1883 or after it. Because in 1883, the Quidditch goalposts were changed from a basketed version to a non-basket version, the ones we know from the movies. Now, I can't say for certainty that Avalanche and Portkey games will go this deep and close into the lore. We have a good track record with Portkey games, with Hogwarts Mystery on the mobile. Although not a full-fledged video game, it is a fairly cool adaptation of the Wizarding World, and they do get their lore pretty spot on. There aren't any major lore breaches from what I played of the game, and I am deep into the game, I, I am up to date with the game. 
in terms of chapters, I'm on year six, nearly the end of year six. If, if, yeah, it, it should be the end of year six. Now we're already dealing with the whole situation with R and everything, so it should be near the end of year six. So I'm pretty up to date on it, and there haven't been any major lore breaks. So I think that we might actually be onto something here if they go super deep in lore and they go to everything really really neatly I think 8083 could be a fairly good starting point well maybe not 1883 per se but 84 85 you catch the drill if we start at 8083 the seven years will go until 1890 or 1891 and then if we add like another three or four years we'll go into the 90s, we'll go further into the 90s, and that gives us some leeway to work with the last decade and a half of the 19th century. And honestly, I think that that's a fairly good position to start. There was another point that I figured could work for the game, but it's something that I don't really want them to do, per se, because it would involve them adding a character that I don't know it's just it's too big of a character I think to be downgraded to such a position but if made correctly could work the year in question is 1892 and for the more zealous wizards and witches like me who know the wiki or know the lore front and back without needing the wiki, which I'm not that into it yet, is the year where Halpas Dumbledore starts Hogwarts. Now, yes, it would be cool to be able to befriend Albus Dumbledore. Note, I do not mean for the game to start in, in 1892 and thus making our character a first year student along Albus Dumbledore, but started somewhere before and when Albus Dumbledore joins Hogwarts our character is like already on its fifth year or something and if your character happens to be a Gryffindor mine won't be I'll tell you that much right now uh, if your character ends up being a Gryffindor you'll get to interact with Albus Dumbledore more directly Hell, you could even be his prefect or head boy. Well, prefect, because if you're in fifth year, you would be a prefect. Only then you jump to head boy in your seventh year. So, again, it would be really cool. And we must be prepared to see some known characters from the lore in this game. I will delve more into that in a future video. But, I don't know, Halbus Dumbledore just feels like that character that... Mm, it would be cool to see, but mm, maybe we can start a bit before to avoid putting him there. I don't know, it just... It would feel cheap. I don't know why I can't put it into words, but for me it would feel cheap to do that. I, I don't know if I'm getting my point across. I don't hate Dumbledore or anything, gods. I have a pop from Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts of him, so it was a gift from my sister, but still. And yeah, now 1883 and we're after, but before 1892. Like, for me, it would be the perfect segue to start the game. Now, as far as story goes, we have a little bit more information, but not much more than the setting. The official synopsis reads, and I quote this from the Hogwarts Legacy official website, which I'll link in the description below, and I should have the synopsis play on screen right now. It reads, experience Hogwarts in the 1800s. Your character is a student who holds the key to an ancient secret that threatens to tear the wizarding world apart. You have received a late acceptance letter to the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry and soon discover that you are no ordinary student. So, Pretty standard Harry Potter stuff, even in Hogwarts Mystery. <laughs> it's a very funny thing. This is the template for every Hogwarts character ever. Main character, that is. You possess an unusual ability to perceive and master ancient magic. 
Only you can decide if you'll protect this secret for the good of all or yield it to the temptation of more sinister magic. Now, this is not much to go for, but as I said, pretty standard stuff. You are a supposedly normal student, you discover you have something greater within you, some greater ability, you're either the chosen one or in the case of Hogwarts Mystery you are yet you are the sibling of someone who caused great trouble and now you are left to solve all the problems of the school. Pretty standard stuff really. But um, yeah, something that I want to discuss and this ties into the story section is the actual time frame. Now, the earliest leak, the first leak that ever dropped about this game made the point of saying that we would be playing as a fifth year student or that our character would start already as a fifth year student. Now, this makes no sense for two reasons. First, no one gets into Hogwarts straight to the fifth year. I guess there is nothing in lore against it. There's also nothing for it. So, okay, we can say, well, your character has already lived these four, his four first years in Hogwarts and now you start his adventures on fifth year when he's already a fifth year student. And I'm like, okay. But this synopsis mentions the acceptance letters. So I am led to believe that we will start at the very first year and that makes sense. Like in the revealed trailer, we saw the character buying his or her wand in Ollivander's. So you can't get more first year than that. If you're getting a wand at Ollivander's, you're not gonna jump straight to fifth year. Sorry, there's no way it's gonna happen. No matter your ability to perceive ancient magic, you're not gonna get into fifth year straight away. So I say that we will start in the first year. Now, this being said, there's two options. The most desirable option and the less desirable but understandable option. Now, let's start with the most desirable but the most taxing, is to have each year play out on its own. You have seven years in school, you play through the seven years. Like, there's no need to make them super massive, like 30 hours each. A 30-hour campaign for each of the years. There's no need for that. But have us experience some key moments from those years. And have us learn things specific to those years, like charms and potions and transfiguration and all the other, and all the other course units from each year. Now, this is taxing because it's seven years. Seven years that they have to condense in a sort of realistic time frame for a game. Games normally have about 30 to 40 to 50 hours of content overall. RPG is a bit more so, but then again, I do not think this will be an RPG like like Skyrim or like The Witcher, where you have a hundred hours of content at the minimum. Like I myself have nearly 800 hours in Skyrim, modded and vanilla, and a bit over 100 hours in The Witcher. So I will happily sink those 100 hours plus into an Harry Potter RPG. At the least, I. I think I'll do at least four playthroughs, if nothing else, just to play with each of the four houses. So, <laughs> and there will be at least 400 hours if I decide to do everything on four playthroughs. So, I understand that having the seven years playable can be a bit much. Now, the second option is in line with the second rumors that were leaked a few years back. Not a few years, but like one or two years back, which pointed that the, the story would be separated in three or four chapters. I do not remember, I forgot to check, but the things were going like one chapter, you would have your first and second years, which makes sense, you know, the two formative years. You get the year of discovery, which is the first year, and then the second year could be pretty much uneventful, and at the end, 
you would have the choice of the electives for the third year because as we know at the end of the second year they have to choose elective subjects a minimum of two elective subjects to go to the third year so from what the trailer shows i believe that one of those electives will be care of magical creatures so not much choice there and i i am almost definitely sure that the other one will be divination i do not see them putting rune studies or anything but who knows it would be very interesting to have rune studies in in the game as like a mini game type thing but i will discuss classes on yet another video not today but yeah then you'd have your third fourth and fifth year together in another bigger chapter because it's three years and then you would end with your exams the owls then another chapter with the two final years, year six and seven, and a full chapter with the after school things. So four chapters, three of which that condense the seven years of Hogwarts education. Now, I say this is the least desirable way because honestly, as a massive fan of Harry Potter, I want to play through all the years and feel like a student going from year one to two to three to four and etc. But from a gameplay perspective and as a gamer, I really doubt I'll be able to stay invested in a game that pads seven years of content, even with the side stuff that they might add. Having all the seven years precisely going as full years can be daunting. And the, uh, the sheer idea of it is daunting so the least desirable way is the one that makes the most sense from a gameplay perspective and, and from a development perspective the other one is just wishful thinking and well it's what the fans would want really isn't it but yeah I will make all my assumptions from here on out based on the yearly structure Although I believe that the least desirable option will be the most likely to be implemented. So bear that in mind that I will make my assumptions based on the, the yearly schedule. Like year after year after year after year. As I said, it doesn't need to be a 30 hour experience for each year. As I said, year two can be a little bit smaller. Year one for me needs to be the bigger one, like not the biggest, but needs to be bigger than some other, like bigger than the second, bigger than the third, bigger, bigger than maybe the fourth. Years one, five and seven to me need to be the biggest of the seven. These three need to be the biggest. Year one, for obvious reasons, is the first year. It's where you discover everything. It's where you have the most classes. Well, not really. After year three, you have more classes than in year one, because in year one, you have the core subjects plus flying. Then you drop flying in the second year, and then you have to choose at least two electives. So you get two more, one more classes than you had on the first year. So it's only after the fifth year that you are allowed to drop classes if you haven't passed the owl. So yeah third and four years and the fifth years are where you have the most classes but never mind that's besides the point year one needs to be big year five and seven need to be big as well but maybe not as big as the first year and if we think about it from a gameplay perspective year one is where they are able to introduce the majority of the side content like you have flying which is a which is a, a mandatory subject in the first year like mini games with with your friends if we'll probably have chess at least gobstones maybe i don't know who knows and whatever else they decide to to put in interactions with friends that's a day one introduction i think and i have a really cool idea on how that can work and i will explore that later in another video dedicated to the character to the playable character but yeah 
And I think that's it for today. I don't really have anything else to talk about. Just one more thing. I really hope that this big choice they mention at the end is not really all black and white, like, like it feels here. Like, you can either protect the secret for the good of all, or you can use it to go, to go rogue. Like, why not use it to do good? Or why not keep it to yourself? Well, I guess that's, that's the dark road. But, you know, you, a more grey, use it, but for the power of good. I'm sure there will be multiple endings to this game. It is an RPG, after all. That's okay. Multiple endings in RPGs make sense. In RPGs that make sense, not in an Assassin's Creed game. <coughs> On the sea, I don't know why I had to do this, but I have. Now, this is it for today. Story and setting are done for. I, I will probably update this as we get more information, and I hope I get to update this. As we get more information, the website is really bare bones now. You can look, you can look it up for yourselves. I'll leave a link in the description below. It has the synopsis. It has some really cool, like titles that flash in and out. I will, I will again discuss this on the character video, but they, they really give me hope. That's what these titles are doing. They give me hope. Like, they give me a lot of hope. And they have a Q&A with frequently asked questions that they put together to kind of take some doubts out of the of the gamers who maybe don't know the label of, of the port key games. And, and yes, we do know that ending the setting, we do know that the game will not only take place in Hogwarts Castle, but in the surrounding areas, Oxmead, the Forbidden Forest. There's that area where we see two characters flying on hippogriffs. I don't know where there is. Like, that may be a landmark for people who live in the UK. They might know where that is. Because Hogwarts is in Scotland, right? I'm not sure, and I should know that. And I'm so Oh, so embarrassed that I don't know that. Give me a second. Oh, God. I do not know where Hogwarts is. <laughs> My God. Like, let, let, let me just see where it is if the page loads. Aha! Highlands, Scotland. I was right. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it is in Scotland, so there may be somewhere close to Scotland. At first, when I was seeing the trailer, I thought, well, that looks like what would become Hagrid's hut. But then the area, the surrounding area doesn't really make sense because there's not that big of a of a water, of a bed of water near the castle. There is the Great Lake, the Black Lake, but the Black Lake is not right near Hagrid's hut. So and of course, there may not be a Hagrid set because there's no Hagrid. There's another groundskeeper, but not Hagrid. But yeah, we will have to wait and see. I will keep doing the speculation videos and I will update them as we get more information. Now, this is it for me today. If you've enjoyed, please leave a like, a comment, and if you'd be so kind to go the extra mile and stay tuned for more, please subscribe to the channel for exactly that more. I will see you guys next time follow me on twitter as well before i forget and i'll see you guys next time bye bye